This video was sponsored by Brilliant. More on them later in this video. Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. This is the fourth part of my series on plug data and pure data on Electrosmith's Daisy Seed processor or the Hothouse paddle. And today I'll create a polyphonic virtual analog synthesizer running on this paddle. In this video, we'll brush more high profile topics like abstraction, data packing, virtual connections, aliasing, and of course, handling polyphony. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into it. In the previous videos I created a granular delay panel based on the Yamaha EX5's water effect and my original idea was to make the finishing touches in this video. But I got a couple of comments asking for a virtual analog synthesizer instead. So that's what I'll talk about today. By the end of this video you'll know about oscillators, envelopes, filters, MIDI input, polyphony and most importantly abstraction and cloning. Plug Data is an open source project. You can download and use it for free, but please show your support for the developers. For this video, you'll need a MIDI controller with a USB connector that ideally has its own power supply. This is the fourth part in this series and I won't explain the basics again. If you need help with that, please watch the other videos first, I've linked them under this video. Our goal today is to create a simple polyphonic synthesizer and the best way to start this is to create a monophonic one first. So add a DAC object on the canvas and then from the oscillators menu a phaser, which is the most basic waveform in pure data. Then connect a slider to the phaser's left frequency input, set its range to cover 1 to 5000 Hz and connect its output to the DAC. Then go into run mode and move the slider and you'll hear the phaser following your movements. Now, if you move around the slider, you'll hear a lot of aliasing, which results in unwanted frequencies that are not the frequency you're playing on the keyboard. These frequencies occur because there's a discrepancy between the sample rate your computer works at and the frequency you're playing. A saw wave, for example, generates a lot of high frequency harmonics that exceed the maximum frequency your current sampling rate can handle. So your computer will write down a couple of samples it has taken and then try to reconstruct the wave from that insufficient data, which results in a lower frequency, as can be seen in this diagram here. Now we could just bump up the overall sampling frequency to navigate around this problem, but doing that is very expensive in CPU cycles needed, as all of the DSP effects, envelopes and anything else will be forced to run at that higher frequency as well. So a better solution is supersampling, which renders the waveform at a higher resolution, then applies filters and renders the resulting wave back to a target resolution. Luckily, the heavy compiler in plug data comes with its own implementation of supersampled oscillators. So remove the phaser and replace it with the hv.oscillator saw and listen again. All the unwanted artifacts are gone now. <laughs> Now, this current setup is of limited use. Let's make this playable with a MIDI keyboard. This isn't too hard. All it takes is the note in object, which will capture the note number, velocity and MIDI channel of incoming notes. Add the MIDI to frequency converter or MTOF object after that, and you can now play melodies on your keyboard. But now the note never stops playing because there is no envelope that changes the volume of the oscillator. So let's create one. The object we need is a V-line, which creates ramps at signal rate. 
which means it provides values at sample rates, so it's ideal to control audio volume and other things. We're using the HV.V line here, which is compatible with the heavy compiler. The V line takes tuples as input, the value it should ramp up to and the time it should take to get there in milliseconds. Let's create a static ADSR or attack decay sustain release envelope first. We'll start with a ramp up tuple. The syntax here is pack 1 250 which tells the V-line to go to full volume within 250 milliseconds. We will now add a delay of 250 milliseconds and then reduce volume to a quarter within 400 milliseconds, which is the ramp down to the sustain phase. We will then add another delay at 600 milliseconds and then go back to zero within 400 milliseconds. We can now add an amplifier node to our setup, connect the oscillator to its right input and our envelope to the left input, and we can now play melodies with a note that actually ends. But there are a couple of problems here. Firstly, the sustain phase does not work. It does not extend the note length when I hold the key longer. And secondly, the release phase triggers even if the note has faded away already. So let's fix that. First, we need to distinguish between a note on and note off event. In MIDI, sending a note with velocity zero counts as a note off command. So let's split up our MIDI input accordingly. Every MIDI note with a velocity bigger than zero goes left and the other ones go right. We can use the select command for that. Select zero will obviously catch all the note off commands. And for the other ones, we can use a bigger than zero operator and check if it's true. This will catch all the note on commands, regardless of their velocity. Now remove the delay that leads into the release phase and connect it to the select zero instead. We also need to consider the case that the user releases the key before the decay phase has ended. Luckily, the delay object takes a stop command, which ends the delay and also stops the line from ramping. Instead, the release phase will take over the job and ramp the volume down to zero. We can now add, for example, a resonant low pass filter here and add a control for filter cutoff frequency and resonance. Cutoff frequency is stated in Hertz, so adjust the min max values of your control accordingly, while resonance can be any number above zero. Be aware though that setting the resonance to zero will deactivate the filter, so choose the minimum number of your control to be slightly above zero. Right, so we've got a simple mono synth now. What about polyphony? Well, Plug Data has a brilliant solution for that, which is a great moment to introduce today's video's sponsor. Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform that offers a more effective way to learn by presenting engaging problems with graphical representations that invite experimentation and playing with concepts hands-on, which is much more effective than watching tutorial videos. In this way, Brilliant helps you learning from the ground up. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis and AI. For example, the logic course is a great way to fresh up your software problem solving skills. Presented in 45 lessons over 9 courses, this will certainly help you solving data management problems in pure data. Brilliant encourages you to learn a little bit every day, keeping track of your progress, starting at the foundations and eventually leading you to solve really challenging problems. Problems. Give your mind a daily workout with interactive courses in math, programming, science, AI, data and more. You'll become a better thinker and problem solver, one hands-on lesson at a time. Whether you're learning to translate your ideas into code, build formulas, design electrical circuits, run simulations with data or explore cutting-edge topics like AI. To learn free and brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash Floyd Steinberg, scan the QR code on screen 
screen or click on the link in this video's description. Brilliance also given my viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. And with your logic sharpened, let's return to polyphonic oscillators and pure data. It's time to introduce abstractions. This means taking part of your patch and putting it into its own separate file that resides in the same directory as the main file, which enables us to reuse that part. We need this for two reasons mainly. First, each voice in our synthesizer needs its own oscillators filters and envelopes. The more voices of polyphony we have, the more crowded the layout of our canvas would get. And secondly, the polyphony module we're going to use will create voices dynamically and requires them to exist as abstractions. Luckily, doing this isn't too hard. For example, making the ADSR envelope a separate reusable entity makes sense, as we're going to need it for both amplitude and filter envelopes. First, create a new patch. Now, mark all the parts that belong to the envelope, cut them away and paste them into the new patch. Now, create for every object that receives input an inlet. In case for envelope here, that's an inlet for triggering the envelope and for attack, decay, sustain and release times. If you're using multiple inlets, like in this example, you should name them accordingly as shown here. Finally, add an outlet for each data or signal channel the patch has. Then save this in the same directory as the main patch. For example, let's call this one envelope ADSR. Now you can add an object called envelope ADSR to your oscillator. As you can see, an object appears that has exactly the same inputs and outputs as we specified previously. We will now add inlets for velocity, pitch and channel to our oscillator here, delete the MIDI input and MTOF objects and replace the DAC with another outlet like this. We are now ready to add polyphony, which in theory is quite easy to pull off, but in reality it's a bit tricky to, put, to do if you're doing it for the first time. Create a new patch and add the note in and DAC objects. Then add a poly object and add the number of the notes you want to be able to play simultaneously. 8 or 16 seems to be a reasonable value. The poly object receives MIDI note on and off commands and correctly distributes them to oscillators that are connected, handling voice stealing and other problems that arise from polyphony. As you can see, this has three outlets, voice number, pitch, and velocity. We will now add a clone command. This is able to create multiple instances of any existing abstract object in your directory. Let's write clone voiceover 16 s1. As you can see, the clone command has only one inlet, but the poly 16 command has three outlets. So we need to pack those three values into one. So let's add a pack FFF for float, float, float here and connect it to the cloner. We we could connect the 16 voices to the DAC, but playing more than one note would most certainly result in a distorted sound. So let's divide 1 by 16, reducing the volume of each individual note and connect that to the DAC. You've probably noticed that the clone command threw an error because the voice cloner class didn't exist yet. Creating this is the last step, so create a patch named voice cloner and add the following objects to it. An inlet, which receives the packed data, an outlet, which sends the audio output of the oscillator, an unpack ff command which unravels our data packet into velocity and note number again. And note the voice number has been removed from this packet because we are inside a single voice here at the moment so to speak. And the mtof object that converts the note number to pitch. And finally an osc minus saw which loads our saw wave oscillator we created previously and its envelope and filter combo. Save this. Go back to the main patch and try playing some chords. Yay! We can now add a simple delay line here to fatten up our sound.
Once you play the 8th or the 16th note, you'll probably notice plug data throwing an error. That's because notes are counted from 1 to 16, while the instruments are counted from 0 to 15. We can easily solve this by adding a minus 1 operator on this side. From here on, you're on your own. But it shouldn't be too hard to introduce multiple detuned oscillators, filter envelopes and LFOs. I won't go into detail here, because this video already is much too long, but you can pick up the ideas from the screenshots you're seeing now. Yeah, and that's it for today. A polyphonic virtual analog synthesizer running on Electrosmith's Daisy C processor or the hothouse pedal. And if you think this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. You can also support me on Patreon or become a channel member using the button under this video. And if you don't want to commit monthly, you can also use the super thanks button under this video if you found this video to be helpful. But of course, none of this is mandatory. As always, Thanks for watching to the end and see you again very, very soon. And thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Bye bye.